did explain to me very sweetly that I was not marrying just a man, I was marrying a school system. <laughs> you have to get these things worked out ahead of time, but that's why they made prenuptial agreements. <laughs> you must sit down and discuss these things before you choose a lifetime partner because you do not know what they are going on to become, whether it is good or whether it is evil. And we hope that it's good. And life is a series of choices from where you choose to go to school and live, to where you work, to your friends. You cannot choose your family most times. They are God given to you. But many of life's choices rest upon what you choose to the young people in the audience. And the students of Cleveland Heights High chose to be in gospel choir. I have never heard the mention of force in order to be in a choir, only of choice. And when we all choose the right and the good, the right and the good comes from it. And uh, so Bill chose me to be his wife, and I chose him to be my husband, and he said, you are married in the school system, and I gave him his freedom to be and to do whatever he wanted to be and to do for his school system. I do not stand in his way when he plans occasions, rehearsals, uh, visits to detention homes, justice centers, uh, teaching music, staying after school, uh, Tuesdays for lead rehearsal, Thursdays for choir rehearsal, Saturday in a church rehearsal on Wednesday, Sunday school on Sunday, every other month, um, church orientation, superintendent of Sunday school, deacon, and was the brotherhood choir director. <laughs> and Bill does a lot, and I stand behind him whatever he chooses to do. And it probably makes you wonder, well, how did he have time to find someone? But as you are traveling along your life's way, doing the things that you like to do, you will bump into someone who likes to do what you like to do because they are there too. And Bill <clears throat> met me in the church, and uh, we passed each other at various musical occasions. But it wasn't until many, many years down the line that our eyes were open to each other. We had been there all along. We never saw each other. <laughs> so whatever you're doing, wherever you are, wherever you're standing, if you are single, someone will bump into you and you will know that person when you see them. And I, wanted, uh, I want also to give praise to my parents-in-law, Mr. and Mrs. Tarter. I want them to stand. <laughs> because they enjoy doing it. Half the time, you don't need to ask. But when we do need and ask, they are always there for us, always. And that is a blessing. Um, I just I wanted to also encourage Bill that it is a blessing to be able to lead and guide other young people. And uh, I'm glad to say that after gospel choir is over and these children go on to the rest of their life, which is where they're headed, we get many positive feedback. We get invitations weddings, baby showers, they bring their children by our home, we visit them, uh, we are always going and on occasion, uh, we get lots of communication and feedback from the young people, and that to me is what it's all about, each one reach one, each one love one, each one teach one, you know, it takes an entire community to raise a child, you know, and when, if you remember back when you were in high school, those of us who are adult now, think about the teachers that you remember, and I'll bet you that you remember your music teacher. You know, I'll bet you you do, no matter what age. I had three, and I remember all of them. And so music is a very important part of my life. Now the choir is a very important part of Cleveland Heights University High School District. And I want to wish you continued success. Bill would not be able to direct 
and less even have you there wanting to be directed, wanting to sing, wanting to be a part of this group, wanting to share your talents for someone else's pleasure and help, and that's what it's all about. And I want to sum it up by saying that there's a poster that the choir gave you a long time ago and it still hangs in our office, and I think that it captures the thought beautifully. It says, God respects me when I work, and he loves me when I sing. And thank God for all of you. There are so many things that I need to say, but I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, to try to put in a few words, 20 years of thoughts, though I need you to pray with me, we can do that. I need to acknowledge so many people, and I thank the Lord that Mrs. Hoffman has already started that for me, and Mr. Harris, and acknowledging certain groups of people. But I do want to also ask that you applaud one more time all the members of the parent organization right now. They work so hard and are so supportive. To the students who are here from the current gospel choir, I am so proud of you. Do give them one more round of applause. <laughs> to the faculty members, administrators who are here, and those that were not able to be here but still sent words of encouragement, supported us in the souvenir book, let's give all the faculty a <laughs> Beautiful accommodation. Let's thank God for that. I told Eric when I came in, I thought it was a tape plane. It was that professional and that beautiful, and that is a gift that they have. And we thank God for them sharing that gift with us. I also want to thank uh, my mother, my father, who you've seen giving the tribute. Um, I couldn't tell you enough how much I appreciate their respect, their leadership, their support. Uh, my aunt is also here, my mother's sister, I'd like her to stand up. She comes to all of us. And I say, uh, my mother and Mrs. Goodlow used to be members of the Wings Over Jordan Choir. And some of you will know that music has been a part of our family for many, many years. And I respect what they even showed me and taught me about music. I also want to thank the Lord for all of my family who are here, and even those who are not here. We have two older daughters, Sherelle and Kristen, who are 24 and 22. And when my parents couldn't babysit, Sherelle and Kristen were always there. And we tried not to overdo babysitting with them. You know, teenagers, I know you can appreciate what I'm saying. <coughs> that you love your brothers and sisters when you don't have to watch them all the time. Amen. Okay, and we do that with our own children, and I'm sure that these boys love their sisters so much because they grew up loving them and caring for them so much. Um, I also want to appreciate the Wright family, an outstanding family of It is. It has not been difficult when God gives you such talented people to work with. And you heard it said of the present students, my wife said it, that I couldn't be a director if there weren't students who choose to come to rehearsal. And it's amazing how God provides. When I don't have a piano player, those are the lean years. I have to sit down and bang the chords out. But it seems like the Lord hears my plea because the next year he'll send about four or five talented musicians and the young people who come as musicians as lead singers as background singers have a commitment that is inspirational to see them come out on weekends when they could be so many other places that they devote their time to gospel choir <clears throat> is an amazing miracle i also have to say that this time i, I remember some of the tribute that alumni tried to give to me to encourage me 10 years ago uh, at the Glenville Church of Christ there was a 10-year reunion 
planned by Marsha Bragg and Justine Gates and Beverly Moore Golden and several other alumni members. And they did it so beautifully. They rented me a white tuxedo and uh, it was a beautiful occasion. Just to say, keep on. Uh, be encouraged. Um, sometimes, even though I had all these plaques and tributes coming in, I have to tell you, I felt like Joseph in a way. That at one point, Joseph was uh, enslaved by the Egyptians. And then later on, he was exalted by those same people. And it's amazing to me that I've lived long enough to see that the race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but he that endureth until the end. And there were times that I did feel like throwing in the towel with gospel choir. And I uh, remember Brendan Glass said last night at the concert, I don't know what keeps him going. But it's just the joy of the Lord. It is my strength. Because when I was ready to throw in the towel, God hit me with, now wait a minute. It was me, God, that started Gospel Choir. And for Gospel Choir to stop, it would have to be God again. So he kind of chided me for saying, now, now you should not have been shaken in your faith. The year the school board president the principal and the superintendent wanted Gospel Choir out. And now all three of them are gone. And Gospel <laughs> Choir is still here. And we all the stone away to look. I also have to say that uh, the 15 year celebration at the Kane Park was an event that my wife and I talk about often. Eric and I talk about it as a special moment in history. When the gospel choir performed with the Wright family, we figured there was no other group that we'd rather be with, and the Greater Faith Baptist Church. That was a special occasion because that was only the second time gospel had ever been performed at Cane Park. Probably they've done it maybe two other times since then. Cain Park doesn't usually feature gospel. But uh, they're beginning to see that Cleveland is interested in seeing gospel presented at Cain Park. I believe this summer the mighty clouds of joy are planned to be there. So we appreciate uh, having been a small part of seeing that gospel could be presented at the Cain Park Amphitheater. That was for our 15 year celebration. And we also have to say that as this day approached, in fact, after I heard it was even happening a few weeks ago, I began to wonder, why is God permitting this to come my way? I felt a little anxious or nervous about being in the center of attention for an organization that exists because God permits it to exist. Somehow, musicians or directors get a lot of vaunting and puffing up and praise. And I know that the scripture clearly says, He that exalted himself shall be brought low. But that he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And I almost didn't want to stay too long here. I wanted to go back to night service at my church until enough people kept telling me that I knew it was God. You got to let yourself be in a position to receive the blessing that God intends for you to receive. I started hearing it from my mother. Then I started hearing it from a lot of other people, and I knew it was God saying, "Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord." Then I asked God in prayer, "Well, if you're going to give me this attention, if you're going to have people to focus on me for a few moments, what am I supposed to say? What's the real reason for this?" Then God let me know there were two things that I'm supposed to do. One is to help you see that we should give God glory in all that we do. That finally the Lord helped me to see that I don't need to be ashamed that I'm a Christian, but that I also need to be wise in how I walk as a Christian. That just because I am a Christian does not mean that Jews can't join the gospel choir as we've had Jewish members. It does not mean that we can't have Muslims in the gospel choir, as we've had Muslims in the gospel choir, and that music, as my wife has already said, is a medium that reaches so many people. 
Sometimes we have choir members through the years that say, Mr. Tarter, let's start rehearsal with a prayer. You know, let's have Bible class uh, in rehearsal. Well, we have to teach that there's a proper place for all those things. We know the Word of God is forever settled, but we are a public high school. We have to deal with, a, with this issue in a very discreet, careful way. And I know that the leadership that will come after me will realize that. Thank God for Tanisha's speech about visualizing the future. I too have that vision of a great future for gospel choir, for people who will carry on what we have been doing. The second thing that God helped me to see that I'm supposed to say is to just encourage somebody. I hope that some of the things that I will say will encourage you to know that sometimes even when it looks like there is no hope, keep standing. Having done all, keep standing. Because just when you're about to give up, the Lord can be getting ready to bless you. And I know that there's so many times where I wonder, was it going to come out? Who's going to show up? Um, will there be enough altos? <laughs> you know, will there be a musician? <laughs> you know, and the Lord has helped me to see through each trial to grow a little stronger in faith. And the last thing I'd like to say is that the Lord is so good that he's able to make even your failures and disappointments work together for your good. Now, you don't feel pleasant when you fail. You don't feel real good when things don't work out like you want it to. But remember that all things work together for the good. Put them that love the Lord. The last thing I think I'd like to say is I know that I talked a long time. I looked at my watch when I started. It's been about 10 minutes. But I forgot to mention a few people, also Judge Capers. Judge Capers, we were blessed to hear your teaching this evening. Let's give Judge Capers a round of And also to Andre Wills. This brother was singing in the gospel choir when many times he was the only tenor. There might have been 10 altos, 13 sopranos, and Andre as a tenor. And I remember sometimes that Bob Castle back there at the back is also a member from that same period of time. And I remember saying to Bob and to Andre sometimes when we would go to programs, they would say, wow, it's just uh, two tenors. If it was just Bob, I said, no, there's three. You, Bob, me, and Jesus. And we would always feel better that we weren't really alone. That we might look like we were alone, but we're never, ever alone. I appreciate your presence tonight, and I do thank one more group of people, and that's you, the guests. So please give all of yourselves one
And uh, last but not least, it is so, it is such a blessing to see them growing up loving to praise God. Amen. Loving to clap their hands. Loving to go to church. I know it takes a blessing. And just like my wife did say, that she supports me in what we do at school. I do thank the Lord that as much as I'm dedicated to Cleveland Heights, as much as I'm committed to hard work with the gospel choir, that God has helped me to see that my family should even come before them. I remember the day Billy was born, April 6, 1983. As God would have, there was a gospel choir assembly that morning. And I called my principal on the phone and said, Mr. Barato, what do I do? I mean, my wife is in labor and the gospel choir assembly is today. He said, Bill, forget the assembly. Go to the hospital and be with your family. And I know that was just God helping me to see. Stay dedicated to the gospel choir, but keep your family first. In our zeal for working so hard for our families, sometimes we put the family after the work. And we must be careful, and not only now as adults, but young people, but when you get a family, keep doing it before your career. Yes. Amen. 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 And I know sometimes you're going to think, well, you're working hard to get that money for the family. But to a lot of people who work so hard for their money, yes. they lost their family in the process. And Mr. Ferraro even said that himself to me. He said, I worked so hard as an educator and wish I had put more time in with my own family. That was wisdom that was given to me. I just wanted to pass that on to you. Thank God for you. There's a little heavy coming in with yes. Amen. Yes. Lord, I'm still going to try and get over to church for a evening service. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I count the honor and joy to be your MC for this evening. And listen, Charlie, if you ever need me, you know that you'll be a call. God bless you. Shall we all bow our hands and pray? Our Father and our God, we just thank you, Lord, again for what our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to just say thank you. Lord God, we ask that you would watch over us and keep us, Lord, in your protective care. As we leave this place, Father God, that we find everything decent and order when we arrive to our homes, Lord. We ask you to guide us, Lord, and direct us, Lord, as we travel the dangerous streets, Father God. Say we, we come against you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the honor, we give you the glory and the praise. It's been a good day, Lord. And for that, we just say thank you, Jesus. Bless this family, Lord, and keep them in your care. Bless those that were inspired, Lord, to put this together, Lord. Keep them, Lord, and, and continue to bless them, Lord, as they are a blessing to Mr. Todd and his family. Bless each young person, Father God, in the name of Jesus that lift their voice in praise and worship. Continue to give Brother Tara a vision, Lord. A vision to lead and to guide and to direct, Lord, and to teach, Lord, these young people what praise and worship is all about. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, Lord. And until we meet again, Lord, we just ask that you would bind us together in a great big love, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise. We worship you, we honor you, we give you the thanks again, God, because you are truly worthy. In Jesus' name, we ask all things. Amen. And thank God.